think the protest is intended to sort of uh, awaken uh, and mobilize international opposition, whether it's governments or the people, uh, to support the Palestinian cause, and in particular, you know, to prevent the eviction of Sheikh Jarrah. So I think that's the point of these demonstrations. Yes. Now, also, uh, Professor Help, uh, just uh, looking at the background to uh, this uh, ruling, uh, you know, that the court obviously has uh, ruled that uh, six families must vacate their home in Sheikh Jarrah on Sunday. And, uh, you know, these are people obviously who live there for generations. Just some background as to how uh, this ruling or what was the build up to this court issuing a ruling such as this? Well, you know, Israel is an expert. On, mo on manipulating international law in order to promote an occupation and, uh, and the violation of human rights. It uses international human rights law to violate human rights in a very sophisticated way. So what happened really, really briefly, because it's very complicated, is that in 19, after the war in 1948, of course, during, in the Armistice Agreement of 1949, Jordan and Israel agreed to set up custodians of absentee properties so that the Jordanians could take Jewish properties, let's say in the Old City or if they were around Jerusalem or wherever on the West Bank, and they could dispose of them. They could sell them, they could lease them, whatever. The Jews lost title to them. And the same thing on the other side. The Israeli custodian of absentee properties could take Palestinian properties villages and towns and farms and old urban neighborhoods and dispose of them as it, as it, as it wanted to. Of course, there, were, there was massive more pop property on the Palestinian side than on the, on the Jewish side. And that was the way it was until 67. 67 comes around. Israel occupies East Jerusalem of the West Bank and Gaza. And now there's no more Jordanian custodians. So what happens is that uh, is that the, the Israeli Jews go to the court and say, we want our properties back. Uh, and there's no custodian to, to prevent that. And at the same time, then, but the Palestinians can't go to the Israeli side and say, we want our properties back because there is an Israeli custodian that prevents that, you see? And so in a sense, mm -hmm. the whole legal system blocked the Palestinians. The Palestinian Sheikh Jarrah are refugees from West Jerusalem, where Israelis live. They, they live about a mile away or a kilometer away from their own home that they had until 1948. So they're prevented from going to their own homes back by Israeli law, and they're also prevented from staying in the homes that were built for them by Jordan and the UN after 1948 as refugees because Israeli laws has, has given those homes to the Jewish population. Yes. Now, uh, Professor Alper, can Jordan do anything at this point in time? No, so Jordan is out of the picture now. You know, now it's it's completely. I mean, that's the problem. The Palestinians have no no source of support. Their own Palestinian Authority has no legal support and no legal basis, really, uh, and no power. Jordan has really stayed out of the whole thing, and the Palestinians are kind of left alone. The Palestinian uh, you know, the residents of Sheikh Jarrah are left alone to deal with this whole massive Israeli legal, political, military police court system. And that's, they can't possibly win in that, in that kind of a battle. Well, certainly now that, you know, obviously uh, with Jordan out of the picture and uh, looking at the Israeli courts, and uh, I'm sure there is absolutely no confidence whatsoever on the part of the Palestinians on the role of the uh, Israeli courts as well, Professor Albert. That's right. Because you see, they're protected in international law. The Fourth Security Convention protects people living under occupation. Israel cannot demolish their homes. Israel cannot and move a settler population into an occupied territory. It can't annex parts of an occupied... It can't do anything. Everything Israel does is illegal. But what the courts have done in Israel is to say there is no occupation, right? Because this is all the land of Israel. It all belongs to the Jews, and you can't occupy your own land. And therefore, the 14th Geneva Convention doesn't apply, and that leaves the Palestinians completely helpless and defenseless. Because... The international law that does apply to their case, which is the Fourth Geneva Convention that, that administers uh, uh, occupied territories and protects people, 
Israel refuses to apply, and the international community allows Israel to get away with it. That's the key part that we have to remember. Israel couldn't get away with this uh, if the inter- without the complicity of the international community that allows Israel to play these games. Yes. Now, obviously, uh, what we've also seen is, uh, apart from the uh, Israeli authorities, the settlers themselves uh, who have been uh, found to be very, very intimidating amongst this uh, entire saga that is playing out as well, Professor Helper. What's intimidating? The settlers. No, of course. I mean, uh, you know, the settlers are like the, um, the advance guard of the Israeli army and the police. In other words, uh, Israel doesn't want to be seen in the national community as outwardly, overtly expanding territorially and uh, on the basis of, of, of taking Palestinian rights. So it lets the settlers do that. So the settlers are half criminal elements. They're there illegally. They're ca- they carry arms. They beat up people. But they know that they have the backing of the police. They're never going to get arrested, the settlers. They can kill people. They can injure people. They can throw them out of their homes. And there's no consequence. And so the settlers are used as a sort of, of uh, force, advanced force, to attack the Palestinians and weaken them. And once you get a settler presence in your community, in a Palestinian community, then the police, of course, come in to protect the Israeli Jewish settlers living there. See, that gives them that justification. So they're the ones that get a presence into the Palestinian community. And then the Israeli government comes in and backs up that presence, and then begins the process, legal and judicial and uh, uh, financial, of taking over the neighborhood completely. And that's what's happening, not only in Sheikh Jarrah, that's happening all over East Jerusalem. Yes, and, uh, uh, you know, we've actually seen, uh, uh, you know, as you mentioned, the settlers know that they can't get arrested for whatever, but we've seen a number of uh, Palestinians, uh, protesters, who have been arrested uh, until now as well, Professor Jeff. No, of course. I mean, the Palestinians are, you know, you have to think, I mean, that was the whole point of the fourteen of the Convention. Uh, the U- United Nations understood that, and actually on the basis of the Jewish experience in Europe in World War II, it understood that a civilian population under occupation, which is by definition hostile to them, have no protection. They have no courts of their own, they have no police of their own, they have no army of their own. They're completely vulnerable to the occupying power. And so, and so the Fortune Convention comes to protect. It makes the state responsible for protecting people under their control, but it also makes the international community responsible for being sure through sanctions that that occupying power does protect the population. And Israel doesn't do that. And the international community doesn't intervene and allows it to happen. And so without that protection, of the Fortune Convention, the Palestinians are completely vulnerable. Israel can arrest them, it can put them in jail, it can shoot them as it does every single day, and there's no consequence. You see, this is, you know, people don't go to court, the police don't go to court, the settlers don't go to court, and so the Palestinians are really fair game, if you want to put it that way, uh, to the settlers and to the police and to the military and to the courts. Well, Professor Alper, thank you very much for that. And uh, obviously, you know, you've uh, broken away from the uh, protest to have a chat with us here on Salah Media. As always, we do appreciate your time with us here. And all the best to you, sir. And please be safe. Okay, thank you much. Bye. Professor Jeff Helper joining us uh, out of uh, Sheikh Jarrah this uh, afternoon and uh, breaking away from the protests that are taking place. And again, you know, the Palestinians court really... Uh, in between a rock and a hard place in every way whatsoever, unable to move, unable to do anything, absolutely no confidence as far as uh, the courts are concerned in terms of their rights. And uh, as uh, Professor Halper was talking about uh, the settlers and, you know, obviously uh, starting off this entire thing and how the entire process seems to be working here in Israel. But this is of major concern once again we see these uh, homes being taken over of uh, Palestinians and with the help of the uh, courts in uh, Jerusalem. The time is headed for 5.34. And uh, when we come back, uh, we are going to uh, go for an air break. We still got the Asar Azan coming up.
But uh, coming up is our tribute to uh, Muslim broadcasters and journalists season two. And this afternoon, we have got Ahmed Keji, journalist at uh, Newsroom Africa, a young journalist, alhamdulillah. And uh, he'll be uh, with us at around uh, 4.45. Uh, still to come on the show later on, we'll be talking with Dan Mafora, research officer at the Council for the advancement of the South African Constitution and former law clerk at the Constitutional Court. We are unpacking Chief Justice Moheng Moheng's exit from the Constitutional Court. And uh, later on in the program, we've got uh, Nasheed and uh, we've got the Nasiha and the Dua coming up at around 5.25. And that will be our build up to the Iftar and the Dua and the Azan and the Azan in Johannesburg will be at 5.37 p.m. today. In Durban, it will be at 20 minutes past 5 and Cape Town at 3 minutes past 6 on this day. Friday, the 24th of Ramadan, 14.42. Stay with us. The Iftar Drive on Salaam Media. Southern Africa Dawa Network is a non-profit organization striving to uplift the disadvantaged and empowering through education and Dawa. Donate to the SADN centers, the MA Motala Islamic Center, as well as our Islamic centers in Amoti, Imtalumi, Bocciabello and Castile. Donate your zakat and lilla today. Contact Farouk Sheikh 076-321-0650.